So last lecture, we looked at this example, and we spent most of the lecture constructing the first and follow sets of this grammar after converting it into the right recursive uh, form. Today, we will be applying the LL1 conditions to this grammar to see if it's uh, an LL1 grammar or not. So, uh, converting a grammar from its left recursive form to its right recursive form doesn't necessarily mean that it's an LL1 grammar. So, uh, let's now uh, review the LL1 rules. So, the condition for LL1, you should check basically for every rule in the grammar, check to see if there are multiple valid options. If there are multiple valid options, if there are two or more valid options, uh, then it's not LL1 grammar, right? So here, for every production, uh, X goes into beta 1 or beta 2 or through beta n. By the way, when we use beta in this, you know, the notation that we use here, when we use the Greek alphabet, do you know what that means? What's the difference between using the Greek alphabet here and using the English alphabet? So when we use, so what's the significance of using English here, Greek? When we use Greek, what do we mean? We mean that this is, this can be multiple symbols. Okay, so this beta 1 can be an arbitrary number of symbols, an arbitrary uh, sequence of terminals and non-terminals. So it can be as, uh, it can be just one terminal, can be one non-terminal, or it can be any combination of terminals and non-terminals. That's what a beta 1. It's just a, an arbitrary, uh, any, a general uh, production for x. So these are the alternatives. So we have to have these alternatives. Uh, these alternatives, alternatives must be disjoint. So uh, beta i intersected with beta j must be equal to uh, the the first plus. Sorry, the first plus of beta i intersected with first plus of beta j should be equal to, z to phi for every i and j where you know i and j is between 1 and n for every i and j, and i is not equal to j. Of course, if you compare it with itself, it's going to intersect. Uh, so you compare different, uh, different alternatives. Now, what's the definition of first plus? First plus of, uh, let's say, x goes into beta i equals the first plus is an extension of the first. So if, <coughs> if beta i doesn't go to epsilon, then first plus is the same as first. So this is going to be first of beta i if epsilon does not belong to first of beta i. Okay, and it's equal to first of beta i union what? Follow of x if epsilon does belong to first of beta i. <coughs> okay. <coughs> So now, let's apply it. Now we look at this grammar. 
this is the first production s goes to a or b so in this production what's x x is s and this is beta 1 and this is beta 2 okay now we need to calculate the first plus of first plus of s goes into a <coughs> now what's the question that we should ask ourselves to calculate the first plus of s goes to a so we need to determine if epsilon belongs to the first of beta i or not what's beta i here a so does first does epsilon belong to the first of a here's the first of a does it have an epsilon in it it doesn't have an epsilon in it so first plus is just simply first of what first of a and first of a is b now first plus of the other alternative which is b what's the question that we should ask does epsilon belong to first of b does epsilon belong to first of b no it doesn't so this is just first of b and that's a now what's the intersection between the two first plus of s goes to a intersected with first plus of s goes to b what's the intersection what's the intersection yeah it's phi so this means that in this production or this couple of productions or this definition of s we don't have an intersection we can never have multiple valid options so we are good so so far the grammar is ll1 okay now we check the next definition of a do we need to check this do we need to check the definition of a why not well not only terminal but even if this wasn't a terminal even if this was a non-terminal we still don't need to check this why so even if i replace this with uh you know b or yeah exactly there is only one option so what to check well, we're only trying to, to determine if there can be multiple options, multiple substitutions for a given non-terminal. So here, we only have one option. So we are already good. We don't have to check anything. So wh whenever you get A in the derivation, you don't have multiple options. You always substitute B. You don't have any other option. So this is good. So we just no need to check it. Now, what about this? The definition of B. Again, we have one production, so we don't need to check this. So this is already good. Now we need to check this, the definition of beta prime. Or B prime, sorry. First plus of B prime goes into A, C, B, B prime is what now what should we ask ourselves does the first of a have an epsilon the first of a doesn't have an epsilon in it the first of a is b now if the first of a has an epsilon we should go and look into the first of c now under what condition here under what condition will we have to look into follow of b prime Under what condition will we have to examine the follow of B prime? If all of these have epsilon in their first set, if all of them have epsilon, 
because right now this whole thing is our beta 1 so this is beta 1 this is beta 2 okay so when you look at this we have beta 1 and beta 2 beta 1 is these four symbols beta 2 is the epsilon so when beta 1 has a an epsilon in its first set this will happen if all of these four symbols have epsilon in their first set and in that case i will have to look into follow of b prime but this is not the case here so the case here is this is just first of a and first of a is b now first plus of b goes into what b prime goes into epsilon so epsilon is my beta 2 does epsilon have an epsilon in its first set yes it does so epsilon has an epsilon in its first set so then then this first plus is going to be you can add the epsilon so you can add it uh, but epsilon union or you can you know if you want to apply this you can say the first of epsilon union the follow of what the follow of b prime so the first of epsilon which is epsilon it's you can it will never make a difference by the way because it's uh, only one alternative can have an epsilon in its first set if you have multiple alternatives that have epsilon in their first set so you know for sure that it's not ll1 because then you will look at the follow of b prime for both of so if you have like uh you know x is beta 1 beta 2 and both of these have epsilon in their first set so i know for sure it's not ll1 why because for both of them i will have to look into follow of x so follow of x intersected with follow of x is equal to follow of x so I know that if I have multiple epsilons, the grammar is not LL1. Or multiple betas that have an epsilon in their first set. So anyway, so here I'm just trying to say that you can put this or skip it. It will not make a difference. So but the follow of beta prime is uh, B prime. The follow of B prime is what? End of file or B? Okay. Now what should I do? Look at the intersection. So first plus of B goes to A, C, B, B prime intersected with first plus of b prime goes into epsilon the intersection is b so i do have an intersection which means that i have two valid alternatives so this is b okay so if you get at some point in the derivation so this is s and some point you get to b prime and you are trying to decide what to substitute for b prime and what you are seeing in the input is a b so i'm seeing a b in the input and i'm trying to decide what to substitute for b prime will i know what to substitute no i have two options i can sub this and this would be valid options in this case and then you know ll1 is not going to work does it mean that the grammar is not parsable no it can be it, uh, you know you may be able to parse it using a different parsing technique or you may be able to restructure it such that it becomes ll1 so so far we have learned one technique or one transformation that may translate or may uh, convert a grammar that is not ll1 into a grammar that is ll1 and what was that 
Yeah. What's that technique that we have studied? Yeah, left recursion elimination. Today we'll study another one. Okay, so now the intersection is not phi. So it's not LL1. The grammar is not LL1. Grammar, not LL1. We can stop here. So you can stop here, but we'll, we're not going to stop because we're, we're, we're going to learn how to do this. So just to complete the example, we will not stop here. We'll go further and see it and check the rest of them. Okay, so for the definition of beta prime, we failed. The test failed. And one failure is enough. Now I'm going to check the C, so I'm going to do but faster. First plus of C goes to AD. Again, the question is, does this have an epsilon in its first set? A does not have an epsilon in its first set, so this is going to be uh, first of A, which is B. First plus of C goes into epsilon. Epsilon does have an epsilon in its first set, so this is going to be follow of what? Follow of C. And follow of C is B. And again, I have an intersection. So again, intersection is B, which means not LL1. Last one. So this did not pass. Follow of C is B and first of A has a B in it. Now, uh, first plus of D is what? Uh, sorry, first plus of D goes into B, C. And this is the first of B is an A. So this is first of B, which is A. And then first plus of D goes into B, C is, is going to be what? It's just a B because this is a terminal. So this is going to be just a B. The intersection here is phi. So the intersection of this and this, but this will not help because we already failed a couple of times. So, so in order for the grammar to be LL1, all of them have to pass. All definitions have to pass, have to have, to have only one uh, valid option. Okay, questions? Thank you.